How you doing, folks? All right. I thought I would uh, talk about uh, development of the soul. Yeah. It uh, uh, it is something that uh, people uh, should know that they can do. They can develop their soul. So some folks say, well, uh, my soul's already developed. Well, maybe. Maybe not. Okay. So we'll go back to uh, some of the most early uh, scriptures, uh, sacred writings, the mythology. And uh, we see that uh, there was a god called Ta. Okay, now this is mythology I'm talking, right? A god named Ta, and there's another god named Kanun. Sometimes we see uh, two sitting at the potter's wheel. Okay, so Ta, sitting there at the potter's wheel, makes a child, okay, uh, out of clay, right? He's on the potter's wheel. And after he makes the child, he makes the child's double, okay? And uh, this double uh, will give the clay child, let's say, locomotion, the power to move about. However, uh, this power is, is really not developed. It is simply there. He puts it in there, okay, uh, to be used in, in the future, developed uh, by the child, perhaps when the child's uh, maybe 13 years of age. Uh, so he makes the child, and he makes the child's double. This double sometimes is called the ka of the child. That is, the ka double, the double of the child. Okay. So now, but this, uh, this ka that has been uh, placed in the child is sort of like putty or dough. It is called the paut. Okay. And uh, it can be shaped and formed. Okay. So this tells us that a person can shape and form his own soul. And, you know, this comes through, uh, let's say, knowledge of self. And so people in the ancient times were urged to know thine self, okay? And, uh, and through this knowledge of self, a person can transform his soul or form his soul according to his desire. So if a person now says well, he wants to transform his soul, so that in his future life, it will be, he will be, as he had planned it to be in this life. Prepare in this life for the future life by transforming the soul to be as you want to be in your future life. Now, there's going to be future lives, no doubt about that. This is not the last life, okay? So now, so the ancient spiritualists taught how, you know, how to do these things, how to develop the soul. It is in the ancient scriptures. In fact, it is in the Bible, it is in the Quran, it's in all religious scriptures. You see, all religious scriptures derived from the mythology, the ancient mythology, teaches self-development, soul development, etc. So our religion is supposed to teach us this. If you belong to a religion, it's supposed to teach you this. It's supposed to teach you how this soul development can take place by you, by the person, you see. But it seems that uh, sometimes people just don't bother, they're not interested in uh, developing their soul. 
And so such people have actually left their soul out there. It can be developed by another person, according to that person's will, or by another institution, such as your religion. Religions are in the business of soul development. They're supposed to be telling people how to develop their souls, how to develop their souls. You see? Now, uh, we take a religious institution that uh, tells its folks, the congregation, parishioners, that we'll take care of you. If you're hungry, we'll give you food. If you have sinned, you come to us, and we will pray for you. You see, because the priests or preachers, according to them, they are, or their religion, uh, they are closer to God than what the uh, average person is, the everyday person is, that is the, the parishioner. The one who comes asking for help, saying that he has sinned or she has sinned. Please, please, Father, pray for me. And so the priest acts as what they call an intercessor or a paraclete. That is, he's closer to God than the average person. Therefore, he can make contact with God much easier or much easy, easy, more easily, he can make contact, and uh, and therefore is in better position to pray for the person, to get forgiveness for their sins. You see. And so now, the person. Okay, confesses to the priest. The priest pray, prays and tell the person, yes, uh, you will be all right now. You can go home and try not to sin again. But then we must also look at, uh, they give out a set of laws, such as the Ten Commandments, and they tell people to obey this, knowing that the people are not going to obey the Ten Commandments, at least not fully. That they are going to sin forever in this life. And they will forever return to the priest or preacher saying, Oh, I want to be forgiven. Or either they will resort to prayer. They will pray themselves. Okay. Prayers that have been handed down to them by their church. You see. So now the people we see are conforming to the teachings of the church. The church has dictated, and the folks follow the dictation. They follow, they live by the doctrines of the church. They have conformed to the will of the religion. And when they conform to the will of the religion, their souls... have been formed and are being formed by the teachings of that religion. You see? They have turned their soul over to the religion. You see? Now, when the priest comes, when a person's dying, and give, uh, let's say, the last right, he's coming to make claim. He's claiming what belongs to the church. Now, it, maybe it's a fair deal that if the church does for a person, if the church helps a person when they are in need, or if the church even prays for a person when they have committed a sin, you see what I mean? Then the church is doing something for them. And when something is done for a person, then that person should repay them. You pay back. You're in debt. When people do something for you, you are in debt. Pay them back. Okay? But the church is coming for your soul. You see? 
and your soul has already conformed to the teachings. They've already conformed to the soul has already conformed to the religion. In other words, your soul belongs to them. You didn't develop your soul. The institution that you belong to developed your soul. You see, your soul will go to wherever they determine or the church determines it should go to. It's not up to you. You've given up, you're forfeited. You've given up. You've given up forming your soul to the way you perhaps would want it to be. Unless it's all right with you for the development uh, to take place in the church, by the church, for the church. And they will have your soul in the next life. In this life too, as far as that goes. But a person can always resort to developing their own soul. And it may not be too late for that ever, you know. But it's fine, you know, if a person says, well, you know, I want to put my soul into the hands of the church or the, the religion, then fine, it's their choice. It's not a matter of right or wrong, it's a matter of what a person chooses to do. If you prefer to develop your own soul, then do that. Because in the next life, you are going to pick up on that soul. What they say, what you sow in this life, you reap in the next. The soul that you create for yourself in this life, you will harvest that soul in the next. It will be yours. Thank you. And uh, get back with me. Subscribe. There's a lot more to talk about. All right. Have a good one.